Hear it seizing up <laughs> as I'm grasping <laughs> for something, you know, going, hey, play yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. And then it, at one point, the brain starts going, ah, la, 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 you know, just to try and distract me. It's, uh, you want to be I in think, here. I think it's, isn't that a similar thing to, you know, when porn stars, they just, they just, whatever they do, they're just thinking, come on. Or I don't know which way around it is. Are they, do they, do they try and recite the 1966 Ingle football team to take their mind off of it, or do they have to think of really hot stuff to actually make them able to, you know? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. <laughs> Hello to my mum, by the way, who loves watching this. So. Uh, anybody who thinks their mums haven't been and done anything that we've done, you know, is living mom. in cloud cuckoo land. What's this, what's this man saying? How, where, what was your, your mum presumably was in child of the sort of, you know, would have been in her prime years in the summer. No, what's that? Okay, let's, 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 rewind. Your mum would have presumably been, you know, around during the summer of love and all that kind of stuff, the swinging 60s. Uh, yeah. See? I tell you, I bet they could write a book. Don't write a book, <laughs> please. I don't like this. <laughs> and I don't want it for Christmas if you do. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Hey guys, it's Captain here for another episode of All About the Bass with my good friend Nathan. Hello there, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you Deplete are. Deplete as applicable. Yes. Uh, and uh, anyway, we're doing part two. Uh, last time I was with Nathan, we, we started doing a video on the two PV sort of mini amps, the Mini Max and the Mini Mega. And we spent so long doing the Mini Max, we thought, right, stop, let's do the Mini Mega as a second video. So anyway, that's where we are. So. I uh, haven't seen before an amp with quite so many features packed into such a small space. No, I, I, I think you struggle to find anything that had more features in it, quite frankly. It, it, you uh, get a lot for your money, let's put do. it that way. It's um, lots of, all the bass amps, most of the bass amp companies now would do these you know, super compact, uh, lunatically loud um, and relatively affordable kind of bass heads. Who but were I, the first? Was it, was it Mark Bass? Uh, Mark Bass, I reckon. I think it was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they, they did. They started going small. And then everybody kind of followed suit, didn't they? But um, it makes a lot of sense, though. If you're a gigging bass player, you know, I've, I've got, you know, something very similar. It's small. You just need it. Small light in a gig bag. But, but I kind of think that PV have plus one. So I think what PV have done here is they've gone louder. Yeah. So we're talking now 2,000 watts peak, which is ridiculous, really. That's probably a bit misleading. 1,000 watts RMS. Super light, five five kilos. Yeah, uh, and fifty thousand knobs on the front, uh, <laughs> with extra buttons as well that to do all your stuff like crunch and punch and yeah. Uh, we'll sub, go we'll go through we'll all this. Yeah. You can buy a foot switch that hits all these things and out. I've I've got to say there's there's one PV make a big deal about the customizable lighting, which I I'm going to just get out there early. I think it's a bit of a novelty, and I don't think anybody really cares. But maybe I quite you do. like it. Do you? Yeah, I All do right. actually. So let's do that feature first. Well, if you're, you might be, you know, doing a that, another function that week, and you just you're a bit bored, and you just think, oh yeah, I wish my base set was a different colour. You can have blue lights. Look, green that's, lights. I think, well, it's turquoise. Green that's lights, green. Yellowy, yellowy. Amber, orange. Amber. White. White. Red. Red. Purple. purple. Mm, purple -y. mauve what do you call that mauve <laughs> lavender blue so you can basically just choose how to make your lights if you want to I see I, I personally I quite like it I've got a funny feeling that via MIDI as well you can even have it MIDI switching so that different you know you can just switch different cool is it? whatever Incorporate I don't know if that's set. your bag or not but anyway we've done that feature um, so yeah tons of tons and tons of features uh, very very light it's class D uh, power section now we've talked in other videos about the kind of pros and cons of, of class D 
pros are you can't get arrested for it <laughs> oh <laughs> topical um very lightweight uh, very efficient uh, and affordable uh downsides uh, and again perhaps this is where it's a bit more subjective but i think it's not as warmer sounding kind of amp technology as uh, other older styles of, of, uh, of power amp um super affordable it's about 500 quid this amplifier actually given that uh, you know the value of sterling versus every other currency in the world has just decided to flush itself down the toilet you know who knows maybe these will be a bit more expensive shortly but at the moment there's something like 500 550 pounds right. um let's just go through the knobs and buttons shall we yeah from this side to this side what is that left to right my side right to left as you're watching it uh no left to right as you're watching it i don't know um, gain, compression, it's got an optical compressor built into it, uh, bass or low as EQ they're section, it. let's say. Yeah, parametric low, sec low mids, parametric high mids, high cosmos, which is basically sub bass and an enhancer, and volume. Just quickly, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, parametric means uh, there's, there's two knobs as part of this one knob thing. And you can, so parametric means you can select a specific frequency and then you can cut or boost that frequency so instead of it just being a general yeah. tone up and down yeah. you can be more specific with it so. for sure and then a whole bunch of buttons underneath to do with uh, crunch and com uh, turning the compressor on off altering the way the EQ section works and turning the um, Cosmos feature off as well as muting the amplifier which can all be done by just you know pressing them underneath or can be done with an optional extra a foot switch, which is actually a MIDI foot switch, so if you don't want to buy the PV one, you could just use any generic oh, MIDI okay, foot yeah. switch to do this. That's good. Um, you might already have one. Yep. Yeah, uh, it's not uh, saving, you know, you can't save, uh, you know, settings where, you know, in other words, you can't have one patch where the gain is like this and another patch where the gain is like that. Um, but you can use sure, the MIDI right. to recall. Yeah, you can use the MIDI to recall what settings you've got underneath, but you can't, it's not like a digital. Right amp thing like that. Okay, so the knobs won't run. Yeah, the fan called, which you may pick up on our shotgun microphone. Again, it's thermostatically controlled, so it will just kick in when the amp reaches a certain temperature and switch off when it's uh, when it's not needed. So let's go through some basic sounds first, shall we? I'll go through the EQ section first with the crunch off and um, the gain at 12 o'clock. So here we go. What do you fancy? Well, we're going to stay clean and funky. Let's go funky. It's Funky or oh, soulful? Okay. Soulful. soulful. Uh, yeah. let's, oh, well, I'll do something kind of simple, and then it's a bit easier for people to understand when you're me messing around. For sure. Okay. <laughs> ah. Were you about to go? Um, I was. I love that bass riff. Stratus by Stratus Billy, by Billy from Cobham. Denim by no, it's Blue Stratus. Hey. Oh, the after dodgy aftershave. Yeah, yeah. Go on, you're nearly yeah, as old yeah, as me. Yeah, I am. I'm older, aren't I? I thought, I thought we agreed that before. But you're not. But if you want to be, you can okay. be. Fine. Are you? What year were you born in? 70. I know, you're older. Fine. Ah, damn it! Beautiful timing there. 
Um, I love that song. If you haven't got that uh, album, go and buy it. It's a quality jazz album by Billy Cobham from the 70s. And who sampled that bass line and made it into like a sort of a modern pop classic? Oh, dance so... classic. Is it Faithless or something like that? Or oh, no, it wasn't. Was it's it? it? it's something I should know. But when you get old like me. Post it in the comment section you below. You'll you forget know. forget things like this. Uh, so what you were seeing, the, the, the four little knobs that sit underneath the EQ controls, uh, the, the, the two first ones I pressed, so punch and brightness are pretty obvious. They're basically where you just punch just makes the bass end a bit punchier, brightness adds treble. Uh, the two middle ones are a bit uh, kind of, not seen that done before, but what you've got is on a normal parametric EQ, you're able to sweep from, you know, a fairly low frequency to a high frequency and you sweep and then as Nathan said, you can adjust the level of that. And these two controls at the bottom just narrow that sort of field of sweep I'm not entirely sure why that is useful on oh, it. It makes it more focused. If you yeah. imagine you're looking on it sort of graphically, right? Um, if you imagine you had, um, you know, when it, when that button's out, you've got quite a, a wide yeah. curve, right? And when you narrow it, it makes it much more frequency okay. dependent. So that that's what those, those narrow Q buttons do. I do know some things. You do know some things. Yeah, you know, is here. Twenty five years on the road. Uh, oh, no, man. I don't think so. I'll go back. Na, 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 na. Oh, or maybe no one's done that as a modern dance oh, they have. tune. I'm sure they have. Somebody has, yeah. I'm sure it was something like Faithless or... It I'm wasn't. rubbish at that kind of style of music. Anyway, my wife would know. She loved all that sort of stuff. We could look it up. Um, well, we we haven't got time. But anyway, so let's go back over to the game. We have a crunch control. So as is very popular in bass amps nowadays, a little bit of built-in overdrive. So let's oh. just see. I don't think there's a lot, but we'll see. How much have we got here? Let's see what it does. It's not my favourite kind of crunch sound that I've ever heard. I think I'd rather have a pedal to do that, but uh, but it's there if you need it. Um, but actually, put it on the, the the back humbucker and use a plectrum, and then we'll just see if we can't sort of get more of that sort of attack that you know I like with this sort of. Thing. volume don't you when you hit the, the crunch control in there I'm not sure how usable that would be to just turn on and off within it within a song but anyway so that's that uh, now the optical compressor is very good in here so if you're if you need to tighten that kind of sound up stop the bass end being too flubby uh, so we might go with some more you know like some proper funk stirt style bass riffs here and then we'll just wind the compressor in so that you can kind of see how it tightens it all up so yeah let's start with none <laughs> interesting in particular I think when you're playing that sort of slap bass stuff the uh, it's quite difficult I think to to keep the dynamics of what you're playing within you know if you've got a loud amplifier there are some notes that are gonna go whoa they just jumped out and me in the face I will say that again whoa, there's some notes that just sort of jump out and smack you in the face and obviously having the compressor kind of, um, of prevents it, that from happening. A, well that's exactly what it you know the name Describes it perfectly. It's compressing it, yeah, for sure. And it kind of lifts the quiet bits and squashes the loud bits. So that's basically what it's doing. It's, it's compressing the whole signal. So it smooths it out. Uh, so that's that. Uh, over here we've got the Cosmos feature, which is um, uh, two basic controls. One is a sub octave thing, and one is a bass enhancer. So let's have a little listen to. Uh, let's just listen to the sub octave first, and then I'll wind the enhancer in whilst we're playing. Uh, 
actually yeah, the enhancer bit I turned the, the sub out so the enhancer if, if we just play for a bit now and I'll just turn it on and off whilst Nathan's playing so you can just kind of hear the whole sound just livens up a little bit comes a little bit more dynamic so here we go So that's your, that's your Cosmos feature. Um, what else have we got? We've got some various I.O. on the back. We've got an effects loop. We've got a tuner output. We've got an auxiliary input. Um, you need to tuner, so I guess if you foot switch it, you can do that too. Uh, we've got balanced outputs, various you know ground lifts and stuff like that, pad controls, and we've got two speak on speaker outputs. Um, so that really is our little mini mega demo. Can um, it? Oh yeah, I didn't see that on the end there. Yeah. Um, Has it got like an aux in the in? Yeah. Okay. We're running it into one of the affordable kind of PV4x10 cabinets here. So these are about £300. Uh, there's no high frequency driver in uh, the cabinet. So we're using a blend of the cabinet and the DI output to just give you a sort of an overall view of the tone. Um, I think what we should do now is uh, find a sound that you like out of here. We'll we'll just spend a couple of minutes really nailing something. Yeah. And then, um, is it time, Lee? Is it time? It might be. It might be time to invite Ooh. DJ Capitan Anderton out <laughs> with his uh, with his uh, Boss DR3, which I'm fairly sure Andersons used to sell back in 1987. Um, so it's it's a it's just a good old fashioned. Oh my goodness me! And the uh, the this is a sign. The preset it's just on is called Miami. So Miami. maybe we should just get some our best Gloria Estefan riffs out and just give it some love. Welcome to Miami. Anyway, right, we're gonna take a second just to uh, try and make this as least embarrassing as possible, and then we'll be back. Uh, completes our little run through of the uh, PV Mini Mega, uh, the the very able companion to its baby brother, the uh, Mini Max. Um, yeah, it's cool. Sounds big, lightweight. Look, there's tons of this kind of stuff on the market nowadays. You guys got to go and try and make your own choice about what you like. But but if you know, lots of different flashing coloured lights is top of your shopping list. I suspect this was the Mini Mega in a league of its own. Uh, as far as everything else is concerned, I think it's just basically a, you know another viable option. Uh, price is interesting on this. It's it's a it's crazy crazy cheap for for. Um... Oh yeah, it's got like demo mode, hasn't it? Well, if you unplug it, it starts doing its own thing. Look, Woo! I think this is for like shop display, isn't it? But it's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, but it's 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 great value. Brilliant. Great value. Yeah, it, lo it does loads, loads and loads of stuff for not loads and loads of money. Yeah. So B and PV, you know what this stuff's like. It's usually pretty reliable. Uh, and there you go, good little amplifier. So there we are. I have been the captain, the beat master, 
<laughs> and I think you're Batman, you're Wingman, or something. <laughs> Sideman, <laughs> sidekick. I tried to end on the fill. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs>